Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, welcome back to our slash petty revenge, where people get small wins on others, and the stories are hilariously satisfying, and in today's episode, guys, a Karen picks a fight with a 10 year old, and she ends up losing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's stories, hit subscribe if you haven't, and as always, you can send or link your reddit post to this email right here. There used to be a bar at the end of my street that my mom liked to go watch people play pool. My mom didn't drink, she would just sit there and watch and drink Diet Coke. Apparently, she struck up a conversation with one of the guys one day and he kissed her on the cheek, and then he played a great game of pool. So every time after that, he would kiss her on the cheek before he played pool. Now for some reason, the owner of the bar accused my mom of being a prostitute and then banned her from the bar. Mind you, my mom was a sweet, 300 pound, 50 year old lady who worked as an engineer, and she always dressed like she was going to work. There was nothing about her that would make you think prostitute. So I got petty revenge several times. My go-to was always making big pizza orders and then never going to pick them up. One time, my friends and I went to that bar and my friend peed all over the bar and floor. It was also on a Friday night, with the place nearly packed. My favorite though, was this one Saturday night. So on Saturdays, they had biker nights and the place was packed, and they would always have the jukebox blaring. So I put in a $10 bill in the jukebox and played NSYNC's I Want It That Way 40 times in a row. When I was in college, I was on a road trip and I saw a Canadian bar chain with the same name and logo. I looked it up when I got home, and sure enough, that bar chain had been in business for longer than the bar had been using that name and logo in the US. So I emailed the chain with pictures of the bar and all the info for the bar. They emailed me back to thank me and they forwarded it to the legal department. Six months later, the bar had a new owner and a new name. That was my petty revenge. Yeah, I'd say the owner of the bar deserved getting shot down, guys. One, for blatantly stealing another bar chain's company and logo without their permission. And two, for messing with someone else's mother. Good on OP. And guys, I hate to be that person, but I'm pretty sure OP meant to say Backstreet Boys and not NSYNC. And also, if that were me, though, all night long, the song that I would have been blasting on the jukebox would have been What's New Pussycat. If you know, you know. So I used to work at Best Buy in Geek Squad, and usually the people working the closing shifts had to clean up their departments and such. We had just gotten a new manager, who was an outside hire from Circuit City. The guy was trying to be a hard ass and flex his management powers by being meticulous about cleaning during closing duties. Asking stuff like, did you clean under the registers? Did you Windex? Did you dust? Etc. About every little effing thing. One day, me and a buddy of mine had started closing duties a little early, since the store was pretty dead that night, in order to be able to leave at a reasonable hour. We pretty much wrapped up 15 minutes after the store closed, so we went to the manager to do a final walkthrough so we could leave. So the guy's looking around and everything seems to be in order, until he looks behind some signage on a shelf and he runs his finger through picking up some dust. He then had this grin on his face and he lets out a little weaselly laugh and he says, well, I don't think you guys can go home yet. It looks like you guys still have some work to do. The place is still dirty. At that very moment, my buddy and I looked at each other and we both knew what had to be done. We cleaned the entire department top to bottom, inside and out. Every drawer was emptied, dusted, wiped down, brochures were organized, every computer in the back was moved and the shelves were dusted and wiped, floors were vacuumed twice, top stock was neatly arranged, every inch of the department was gone over with a fine tooth comb, even twice in some spots, just to take longer. So 10pm turns into midnight and everybody else was long gone except for us three. The manager at this point was looking weary and tired, and you could see that he wanted to go home, but he was too stubborn to admit defeat. Midnight then turned into 2am, and we were still going at it, when he finally comes out of the office red-eyed and exhausted, and he says to us, guys, enough, let's go. And that's when I say, but we still haven't dusted under the counters. To which he says, it's fine, let's go. My buddy and I took our sweet time gathering our things and clocking out, We ended up leaving at 2.30am, and we were both also off the next day. 
The Karen manager had to be in at 7am for a conference call, so it made all that much better. Every time he was the closing manager after that night, he never gave us trouble again. He would simply ask us if we were ready to go when the store closed. Justice prevails. Freaking awesome revenge, guys. And this is how you beat a power-tripping boss at his own game. And what made it extra satisfying is the fact that the guy had to be in at 7 a.m. for a conference call, while OP and his co-worker got some well-deserved Zs. And while we're on the topic of bosses getting what they deserve, the next OP teaches his Karen co-worker a lesson she won't forget. So this happened a long time ago. I had a work colleague who was brought in by management on a large scale project and she was effectively given the green light to do whatever she wanted. So the chick got drunk off the small bit of authority she had and she made people's lives miserable, even acting better than our big bosses. She absolutely hated my boss and she was trying every trick in the book to make his life a misery. Now my job would take too long to explain, but I was effectively a go-to guy for quite a few aspects in the office, so I knew I was safe. But she was trying to get him to quit or for me to leave his team. Now what she didn't know was that my partner had moved home to Australia, and I had kept it a secret that I was going to follow after a few months. Life was ticking by, but this effing she-beast pig dog was driving me up the wall. My hours were being increased and my workload was phenomenal. I asked her to get someone else in for me to train as I needed some time off from time to time. And she would always refuse, in the most passive-aggressive way imaginable. Anyway, the date had been set and the projects were coming to a head, which would have seen my workload increase to new levels. I was pulling 14-hour days already. So I went up to my head boss and I told him of my decision and the reasons. He offered to get me a visa for my partner and her old job back if I stayed. I refused, saying I'd need to leave in a month and I needed two weeks off. He wished me well and understood my reasons. All of my references were then sorted and everything wrapped up. Now, the beauty of this was that all my other managers who were involved in the project also hated this Karen as well. So I told them of my plan. They were all happy to play along and to play dumb. A big meeting was taking place later that day, and off she goes, delegating like a champ to everyone, using her power to boss everyone around and push people's buttons. And then it came my turn. I made a point of asking her, was there any scope to get someone in to help me as I'm slammed as it is? I then received the usual dull tone response of go F yourself, basically. And I'm thinking, okay, no problem. She then starts to outline everything that's going on and all the stuff I'll have to do. The expectations were crazy, and her last sentence was, so you'll have to do all that, no ifs, ands, or buts. And my response was, no, I don't think I will. Her face then twisted, and she snarled at me saying, what do you mean you won't do it? This is your damn job. I tell her, like I said, I don't want to do it, so I won't. In fact, I quit. I'm moving to Australia in four weeks, and I'm taking two weeks holidays before I go, so F you. Hearing me say that, her face dropped. She was lost for words. She was scrambling, saying I'd have to train someone, and that's when I took out a copy of my contract and said my responsibilities were clearly defined, and I would honor those ones. I also showed her the copy of the email that I had just sent to HR, showing her responses to my objections of the hours I was working and her refusal to train anyone else. My bosses at the table were trying not to laugh in her face. I then walked out with one manager getting up to pat my back. Because of me, all of her projects got effed over so other managers were able to crucify her. And the best part is, when the head honcho heard, he came down to actually say well played on telling her to get effed. And she walked by and heard him saying it to me and she was fuming. The whole office knew what I did and everyone was delighted that someone screwed her over. I went back to visit at Christmas and people still came up and said how they were happy I did it. I heard she resigned, and she was no longer working there. Yeah, I don't know how you can come back from that, guys. Like, when the whole place, even the bosses are happy that you got screwed over more than keeping the project running, I think it's time to pack your bags. So when I was 13 years old, I was really into snowboarding. So every chance I got, I was out doing that in the winter. There was one huge hill that was open to anyone, all year long, so long as they didn't cut the trees down or wreck the place. The hill it was located on was a plot of land in the woods that a few months prior to this event had gone from being for sale to bought by my uncles to keep it from being bulldozed. 
Now, nobody really knew these men were my uncles because we all have different last names, and my dad's family is huge. That comes up again later. So one day, while I was on the hill, one of the parents said that myself and anybody who wasn't a baby in a sled had no right to be there, as we were too big and too violent to be using the hill. They would do things to drive everyone else away, like letting their kids steal and damage other people's skis and boards. Me, I largely didn't care. I kept going there, and when I went there, I just used my cheap $10 board that was built about as well as a plastic sled. That, as you can imagine, pissed off these Karens even more. I never really understood why they were so butthurt over it, as they could take their kids sledding anywhere, and there were even public roads that were shut down in winter because they were too dangerous to drive on that people used all the time as sled spots. So after about a week of them constantly nagging and bitching at me to get off the property, I finally said, look, you can sled anywhere you want. Me? Because some a-holes decided to wreck property and trespass, I can't even snowboard on my own property. And unless I want to pay hundreds of dollars to go to some fancy resort, this is the only place I can snowboard. This is land that's half a mile wide. I'm fairly certain we can all enjoy it. I didn't wait for a response. I went down the hill and thought that would be it. But as you can guess, I was wrong. Now, I never was the best at stopping, so when I stopped, I hit the trees. Thankfully, they were rather bendy. Over the sounds of laughter and snow being shredded, I can hear Karen screaming and turn to see her at the top of the hill pointing at me and calling me every name in the book. Apparently she called her husband, who confirmed they lived nearby, and said that 1. I threatened her, 2. I called her everything in the book, and 3. That I was a grown adult. Now at the age of 13, I was maybe 3 foot 9, and I looked like I was 10. Her husband even had to fight laughter when he saw me stomping back up the hill wearing a hot pink Barbie snowsuit and carrying a cheap green board under my arm. It's at that point he asked what I said. I repeated it, and admittedly, I knew cursing was wrong, but I expressed how annoyed I was. He was trying to calm his wife, but she screamed more and said, I'm calling the landowners. I know them. They'll kick you out of here. It's at that very moment I smiled like the Cheshire Cat, and I told her, go right ahead. I'll speak to them too. So she did. She calls up my uncle, and she launches into a huge rant, very animated, with lots of flailing and hopping, similar to an angry hen. Finally, when she starts losing steam, I can hear one of my uncles saying, I'll be right there, sit tight. And the smile that spread across her face when she heard that, she sneered at me and said, I'm gonna get you in so much trouble. At this point, it's worth noting that her husband had gathered the kids, and told them to go wait in the truck. He looked like he wanted to crawl into a hole and die of embarrassment. After about 15 minutes, a truck pulled up, and out hopped my uncles. So they come over and speak to the woman, and I can tell that they didn't 100% believe her, but because it was their land, if anything happened, they would be on the hook for it. She then gets loud again, and demanded that I be banned for life from the property, and all that. They then look around, and asked her to point to the dangerous and disrespectful woman she was dealing with, as clearly I was the only one snowboarding that day. It's at that very moment she huffs and grabs me, giving me a shake as she shouted, This bitch right here. Despite it being the middle of January, I swear I heard crickets as the wheels in their heads turned. Finally, one of my uncles spoke up and said, You mean her? That's our niece. And hearing that, Karen sputters and tries to come up with some sort of response, but she failed miserably. My uncles then gave her a choice, to leave now or continue acting how she is, and they would press charges on her to have her banned and charged with assault for grabbing me, as well as being on the hook for any damages her kids caused to anybody's gear. She then huffs and storms off, and her husband following, looking like a beat dog. She never did come back. You know what guys, this is the only story that I've read where a Karen actually says she knows the owner, and she really does. But in this case, knowing the owner doesn't trump being the owner's niece, so see you later Karen. <laughs> like the nerve of that woman. And seriously, I can't imagine the conversation with the husband on the way home. The guy was probably like, really? Did you really have to pick a fight with a 13 year old who's wearing a bright pink snowsuit?
Alright, so I'm at a proper beach for the first time in decades, and this story came up in conversation. I totally forgot about it until today. So I grew up in California, but not close enough to the beach to go often, so it was a major treat for my brother and me. One summer, when I was about 8 years old, we were having a blast building sandcastles with our plastic pails and shovels. We had found a spot with just the right amount of moisture in the sand for maximum structural integrity. It had towers, a moat, it had everything. We were about to call our mom over to look at it, when out of nowhere, this bigger kid, who is my age or a bit older, does a running jump right into the middle of the castle. And no, he didn't stop there. He kept jumping around and kicking it until the whole thing was totally leveled, laughing the whole time. I knew it was pointless to object, so I sat there silently while my little brother cried until the kid finished his destruction and ran off. I then hugged my brother and said, we'll build a new one. He then said tearfully, but the guy will just kick it down again. I then look around for a moment, and that's when I see a large, flat rock jutting up through the sand, about a foot high in my memory, and seemingly sunk very deep. I told my brother not to worry, and immediately got to work coating the rock in a layer of wet sand. Now, I don't know if my brother understood what I was doing at the time, but we started rebuilding our masterpiece. We didn't get very far before we saw the big kid running towards us again, and we move out of his way. The kid starts laughing as he does this elaborate spin kick to destroy our castle. But little does he know, he would kick right into the rock as hard as he could. And at that moment, he collapsed instantly with a scream, grabbing his foot. I don't remember him saying anything to us, but he just drags himself up and he limps away crying. My little brother and I repaired the damage to our castle and we continued building happily. After this, I saw a woman who I assumed was the big kid's mom, the Karen, arguing with my mom saying that her son's foot was broken because of us. Somehow, I knew I wouldn't be in trouble, so I didn't even worry about it, and she never even brought it up with us. Guys, I'm just gonna say that this is actually the perfect type of revenge. One where idiots hurt themselves by being stupid a-holes. Like, if that boy left OP and his brother alone after destroying the first castle, he wouldn't have learned a painful lesson, and maybe he'll think twice about destroying sand castles in the future. Guys, this person shares their comments, and it's absolutely crazy, saying, This tale made me remember my youth, when I was like, a second or third grade. We would build sand castles in the playground sand area, and older kids would always come by later and stomp our work back down to level ground. Eventually we had enough, and somebody suggested that we sharpen sticks from nearby trees and place our spikes vertically in the sand. We did a great job and left. Now I didn't witness the aftermath, but the older kids did stop stomping on our sand castles. Like wow, right? Kids are freaking savage, I tell you. I work alone in a small office in a public building that's undergoing some renovations while it's closed to the public. There's an office space in front of my office that's usually unoccupied. Think of an office space with a manager's office attached at the end. I just rent the manager's office. Building managers were supposed to notify us if they ever intended to rent out the space in front of my office, so we could build a temporary wall or something so I don't need to walk through someone else's office to get to mine. But I guess they thought they didn't need to do this because the builders are only there temporarily. So now the space is occupied by the site office for construction, and I'm slightly annoyed at building management for not notifying me of this. But I'm way more annoyed at the builders because my space has turned into a dumping ground. So to get to my office, I have to walk past light fixtures, tool bags, random chairs in the walkway, and a toilet bowl. And I have to listen to builders talking crap while 12 of them sit in a room fit for 5 having lunch. It's like a teenager's bedroom, but instead of clothes and stale socks, the floor is covered in building materials and tools. I ask them to keep it clear, as it's the walkway to my office and not a storeroom. But they say, sure, and then roll my eyes at me and do nothing. So I take some pictures of the mess, report it to the building management, and one week later, they tidied up slightly. And gave me a sassy, ugh, we cleaned up a bit around here for ya mate, no need to thank us. A few later, and it was almost worse than it was before. To the point that I couldn't leave my office without moving four boxes of supplies that were directly in front of my door. I can also hear them whispering, saying I'm such a C-word and a stuck-up public servant. So cut to today. 
I go to step out to get a coffee, and before I open the door, I look through the window of the door to see someone's half-eaten spaghetti sitting on the floor, right in front of my doorway. I lose my composure for a moment, and that's when I say, F it. I then open the door and proceeded to trip on the bowl of spaghetti, causing it to spray all over the room and the two builders in the room. Spaghetti gets on everything. There was sauce on computers, noodles in the bloody toilet bowl, it's in the carpets, and most impressively, all over the builders. They then start to shout at me, but I get just as mad saying, who the heck puts a bowl of spaghetti on the floor in front of a frickin' door? I then tell them, this is an office, not a storeroom, and you're worse than my teenage nephew. I then told them to clean up their stuff, or I'll start kicking everything aside in the path, delicate or not. They sheepishly say yes, and that's when I go get my coffee. When I return, no one's in the office, and the mess is still on everything. Fast forward a few hours, and I get an email from building management. I crack a huge smile as I read the email, that basically said, the builders reported your conduct, and had us come to inspect the damage. However, we noticed the unacceptable amounts of mess in the office space that had not been cleared up from the last time we asked them to. And they also admitted the food was placed on the floor in front of the doorway, so we expect them to clean up the mess, pay for the cleaning, and place no blame on you in this case. If the mess comes back, please call us directly, as they're on their last warning. So now, I'm occasionally looking through the window on the door, while the builders crawl around on their hands and knees, scrubbing spaghetti out of the carpet. Now I'm not proud of losing my cool and handling things the way I did, but I won't deny that it worked. And it felt really good. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash petty revenge. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's satisfying stories. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode, where a Karen robs a grandma for buying the last Xbox on sale, and she learns a lesson she'll never forget. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.